Good morning in there, out there. Out here, in here, out here. Look at all this snow coming down, huh? <coughs> a little early. Better get a slurp. Vivi's down on the ground. Sorry. I know some of you, <laughs> yeah, that's so sweet, say, it's okay to look at you, but I, re I really like looking at Vivi. And she's barking now. Maybe we could get her up here. I don't know. Well, happy day after Valentine's Day. Did you see how much sun was yesterday? This is called Michigan. <laughs> One day is this, another day is that. I mean, we were out. Uh, we're a little dissembled this morning because we're having a tile floor laid here by a wonderful guy named Jesse Taylor. Boy, what a sweet man. And uh, anyway, that's so uh, we're a little disheveled and Vivi doesn't have a place to sit. And I have to have David's wonderful book board right here. Now you may be wondering, uh, did I go 10 rounds with Mike Tyson? No, I only went half round with a tree. <laughs> yeah. Boom, boom. I've been knocking trees down in our woods and we're not sure why. But they're, you know, fallable because they've gone the way of all trees. And one I pushed and it split up halfway and the top came down and said, and I said, oh, look at that. Why did I do that? I taught in a college for 37 years and that's how smart I am. Boom! Jeez. Oh, slurp. One more slurp. Oh, that's so good. So good. So, uh, this is so great. So, Jesse's uh, laying this tile, and it's beautiful. And he did a beautiful backsplash here. You're all welcome to come in. Uh, there's a ticket booth out front. And, uh, as you know, Julie, my beautiful but and bud, my beautiful and extraordinarily kind <sighs> wife um, was spinning in the other room. And Jesse uh, was there. And hi, if you want to come over? I don't know if you can say hello to everybody. I, I can read. Okay. Oh, well, we'll figure something out, won't we? You want to come up here? Be, oh, now I scared the wits out of you. That's not good. You want to come up? Come on. Come on. Here you go. Well, yeah, this is uh, Laurel and Hardy trying to get the dog up. Here you go. Come on. Hop up. Hop up. Hop up. Come on. Hop. Good girl. How about that? You snowy girl, you're snowy. Where was I? Jesse was laying tile. Vivi's watching the snowflakes. That's a good show. And Julie was spinning. <laughs> and Jesse looks around the corner, and he he just loved seeing that. He went, "Well, man, is that badass? <laughs> that may be the first time." that such nomenclature has ever been applied to the world, the ancient world, of spinning. <laughs> wow. We had our first two geese on the pond. That was sweet to see. I woke up, looked out, and there, oh, oh, two geese. And they had busted through the ice. That was really kind of funny, busted. That's Pennsylvania. They had broken through the ice, and uh, we're just kind of, I think we landed too soon, Harriet. <laughs> yep, Vivi Snows. Hi, Mark. Welcome to San Manolis. Hi, Mariana. Hi, Mark. And Annie. Annie's supposed to come home today. She's our dear friend who had heart surgery. With some uh, repercussions or whatever you say. Um, boy, we've had some tough losses. Some, I don't want to... But you know, grief is just an, an ambush. And, whoo, I got a message last night from the wife of 
an important uh, student. It's very difficult to find out you were a teacher who had an impact on a student and you didn't know it. It's one thing to, you know, teach a subject or something and um, say, well, I'm glad they learned it. But it's another thing to just be yourself and it's hard. And, uh, but oh my goodness, the program with, with Dana Lammers Vanderlucht, where I got to talk with her and the audience got to talk with her about her remarkable book, Enemies in the Orchard, uh, which I think should be up for the Pulitzer, but they don't know what they're doing. Um, it's, it's too humane, I think, probably for them. Uh, but what a good time. If, you'd, if you're interested in seeing it, there's a, well, we'll see you later. <laughs> there's a link to it on uh, that if you just email me, I can send you the link. Uh, and it's one of those things you can start, you know, run it five minutes and go, yeah, that's enough, or, oh, that's interesting. And sometimes things are different from being there and, of course, on the link. Oh, gosh, that's good. <laughs> really got to move this over a little bit. Now the funny thing was that uh, this was, Dana was a, a uh, student of the English department at the local college here and one of my students and the two of us were doing this. And uh, do you know that not one um, uh, faculty from the English department was there? Hey, that's an ad for the college. Come to this college and not so support your graduates who write marvelous books. Yeah, not one. Not one. That's, um, I know how I felt as a former English faculty. <laughs> I can't imagine how Dana must have felt. Oh my goodness. Um, been reading a lot about people trying to help us through this. You know, it. It feels like a third world country where we can still do this. <laughs> However, um, when when people like David Brooks and David French and et cetera, and, and John Stewart comes back, it's it's a pretty rough time. And even, you know, it might have been funny, he says, make love, not war. That might have been just a bunch of silly of all of us running around, you know, of the love generation. and singing Peter, Paul, and Mary in the Kingston Trio and Chilly Winds. But, um, no, that was for something. This is just against against, and it's divisive, and it's... So, there have been a lot of articles lately about what are you going to do about it? Nothing. I mean, really facing nothing. And look out. And I said to somebody yesterday I said, who came in, we're just thrilled with what we're doing here renovating, which was so good to hear, Bob and Louise, Kenny, lovely, thanks for coming over. And it was Valentine's Day. See, I'm wearing this. This is the day after Valentine's Day program. Hmm. Yes. And my wife made me a beautiful Valentine's on the refrigerator because she's in third grade. <laughs> Oh, boy, that's good. Well, what in the world was I talking about? Oh, I said, times. these times are so bad that it amplifies being, looking out here at this, and I realized that if I don't look out at this, it's, it's almost like a blasphemy. It really is, because these SOBs are doing these terrible things let them do them to each other. I, I, I think it's wrong for us not to pet our dog. I said to uh, Hugh, uh, or no, uh, to Rob Kanegi came to visit. Wonderful Rob. And I said to Rob, you know the difference between having a dog and not having a dog?
had a wonderful copywriter. Book is done. It's off to the publisher. The copywriter was the dearest. She would make suggestions, and we both knew she was right. <laughs> she was, I suggest, it's up to you if you want six commas. Boy, she was so dear. Jennifer Lee, thank you very much. I can't thank you. Can't thank you enough. Vivi loves to go in the woods. We'll finish up a little bit here. Vivi loves to go in the woods with me while I'm knocking down trees and having them fall on me. Um, and then she just loves to disappear. And then all of a sudden I'll go, Vivi, Vivi, and worry, where is she, where is she? And she comes zooming up behind me like, ha, ha, ha. I really got you that time. Yes, sirree. Yes, sirree. I think that is about it. About it. About it. Yeah. Except for this. Oh. Come visit any time. Look out the windows. Well, it's Valentine's Day the day after. Where's my... There it is. This is the book with the goldfinch on the front. <laughs> Meredith's daughter did it. Oh, big news. The publisher is going to have Meredith do the cover for the book that comes out in October. Isn't that sweet? I mean, that is. Yep. So, for Valentine's Day and all of you and everybody and blah, 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 a Valentine's Day poem. I was having lunch with John Woods, who... Uh, this wonderful poet from Western Michigan University and John was visiting the college and we were having lunch and John was talking about a New York City poet named John Hollander and he said about a conversation he was having with John Hollander John Hollander makes the smallest talk I've ever heard <laughs> and I just thought holy cow that is such a great line so I stole it. And this is a poem with the brilliant title, Love Poem. How's that? You have to stay up late to come up with that. Love Poem. He makes the smallest talk I've ever heard. John Hollander. The smaller the talk, the better. I want elves in my sentences. I want to sit with you and have us solemnly delight in dust. And one night violet, well, one night violet, and one violet, and our fourth night out, and buttonholes. I want us to spend hours counting dog hairs and looking up who hit 240 in each of the last 10 years. I want to talk about the weather and detergents and carburetors and debate which pie our mother made the best. I want us to shrivel and in nut hatches realize the metaphysics of crossword puzzles, wait for the next sports season, and turn into sleep, holding each other's favorite flower, day, color, record, playing card. When we wake, I want us to begin again, never saying anything more lovely than garage door. Ah, take care. Try to be cheerful. Do be kind. Thanks for being here with me in the snow.